In our ongoing pursuit of tools to encourage people to share the stories of their lives, we are excited to present our newest Rememberize resource. We will offer weekly webinar discussions to share ideas that will help you kickstart your biography, personal and family history writing efforts. Episode one in our webinar series features an interview with Allison Egbert, who has just completed a major family history writing about her parents' lives. The history is now in print for members of her family, and we were lucky to play just a small part in her project. In this interview, she shares her thoughts on what inspired her to pursue the project, what kept her going, and what the end result means to her family. Hopefully, her experiences will inspire all of us to take the first small step and just start writing. So let me let me start with this. Tell me, uh, you you embarked on this huge project of writing this history of your parents' lives and it extended be before them and after them. What uh, what was the driver? What made you want to do that? Well, I think for two reasons. First of all, logically, it's just a good idea. The stories hadn't been recorded, and I, for myself, I had never heard before my father passed away the story of his life the story of his parents. And I didn't want to repeat that for my own children. They hadn't heard the stories either. So that was logical. It was just a good, good idea. And then second of all, um, just a nudge, a nudge that I ought to. And then that nudge kind of became pretty much a full-blown hit to the head that said, well, what are you waiting for? And time's running out. So I dug in. So when, when you decided to take it on, did you have any idea how big, how, how big the project was going to turn into being for you or, or was it did, no, was having a surprise? Not, you, at it? not at all, because actually I didn't know there, there was so many stories and um, things out there about my parents, nor about my grandparents. I was under the assumption that they had all died without any written journals, without any written pictures. I kind of, felt bad that there was this void. And so I went about trying to contact as many people as I knew or going to sites on the internet, looking for anything that might have to do with them. And then the pile started to grow. And I was very surprised that actually there was a lot out there. So I was determined to collect everything and anything I could get my hands on. So you, you started digging, not necessarily in family records, but in, you searched the internet and you did some Google stuff, but where, in the end, how, where did you go to find the information you needed to find? How many different places did you have to search? How many people did you contact? Kind of how did that, I don't need exact numbers, but kind of how did that go? Well, I come from a small family. Um, so I contacted cousins. My parents, of course, had passed away. I contacted my two sisters to see if they had the parents had left anything for them. Um, I found some old interviews that we didn't know existed. Those were exciting things where they seemed to kind of pop up in my lap that I didn't even know they were there. It wasn't only till about two years ago. I never, I never knew my dad had ever kept a journal for a 10-year period. I found out a year ago when I started this that my mother had a journal when she was 16. I had never known that, and she died when she was 86. I don't claim to be an ignorant person, but I had never known that. But I found that maybe because I sought it, it seemed to appear. And that was exciting. It was very fun. That was very fun. So once you started the process, how did you decide what you wanted to include and what you were gonna leave out? How, how, how did you approach that? decision I really wanted to include everything and so I made piles I made pile for my father I made a pile for my mother and some of these things I would find just on crumpled bits of paper little story my mother was tend to be a writer my dad wasn't but anything I could find find from any of these sources old box old um, things that had been passed down. I'm embarrassed to say that my dad had died in 1996 and it wasn't until 2016 that I opened up the boxes. So they had been in my house, but I had never, I, I, and I had maybe opened them and perused them um, briefly, but um, there was a lot of neat things in there. So I made these piles and then I decided next step, what kind of chronology they, what's the timeline? 
is there any pattern? And um, my house became the work center. My kitchen was one person. My dining room was another person. My den was another person. And I had a very patient husband for about a year and a half. <laughs> so you say you made the pile. So clearly you had a point. Did you, like, did you outline what you were going to do kind of before you started the writing process? No. Or did you write, start writing and then get to the, the outline as you went along? No, my first step was the hunt. Like I said, I was under the assumption that I had no stories. So I was under the assumption that there was little to find. And so first I started to dig and to make phone calls and to look on different websites. Um, from that, then the piles accrued. Then the piles got bigger and bigger, which was exciting. And then I saw that, that from the piles, there's actually a story. It actually lined up. Um, from birth all the way to death. And then I put it on a timeline. So I guess you, your grandfather, being who he is, it was easy to find stuff on the internet about him. Right. right. Maternal, but, but the grandparents, so yeah. so. Maternal grandparents, there was no problem. In fact, there was probably too much. Yeah. Um, only for him did I have to scale back. And I just found one small thing. For my maternal grandmother, um, sweet to be able to find an actual recording of her sharing her family story from her own words that my father had taped. My paternal grandparents was a totally different story. And that's, that's what I lacked in my own life growing up to know about. My, my paternal grandfather died when he was 55. I never knew him. My paternal grandmother had lived hundred miles, hundreds of miles away and died when I was nine. I had no relationship with her either. So the paternal side, there was nothing on that side as opposed to maternal. And then from what I could glean from both sides, tried to make it pretty much even, tried to get the highlights. And um, from there, I was actually surprised that it all, that there were, were things that um, had been hidden that seemed to surface. Yeah, so one of the things you said is you said you didn't think you'd have, have any stories, right? No, you didn't know about any stories. It's interesting. Right. When we think about writing our personal history, we all have these great intentions. We're going to go write. And then we start to think, well, I, I really don't. I'm not Ernest L. Wilkinson, right? I don't have a bunch of stories. But it's interesting you found out as you went along that actually in your family, they didn't have to be Ernest L. Wilkinson to have a story that you could share. And maybe that's part of the process that we don't. When we sit down and we just think how boring our life is and we have nothing to share that we don't maybe understand as well. No, and actually it, every single story was equally exciting to me. Every ancestor in their own right, in their own circle of influence. Yes, he did have a very visible profile, but what he did was equal to the task of my grandmother and those that um, were behind the scenes doing everything else just as equally as strong. So you had this nudge to go and you got started. What kept you going? What, 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 what kind of, did you, did you set a schedule? I'm going to do so much a week or so much a day, or I'm going to do that. Or what kept you driving you through to get the whole thing done? Well, um, maybe a more organized person would have had a schedule. I had to just tell myself that this was going to be my, my focal point. I have six children. Um, I am an empty nester, but I was also at the time a seminary teacher. And so I had, I was trying to seminary lessons and et cetera that took my time away from being at home. And I decided that my family history, this project, I needed to stop the knocks on the head and get this done. So I got substitutes for seminary. I said no to projects. I kept telling myself, no, I can't take that next good project under my wing or do anything else until this was done. And I kept telling myself that. But I had to do that for And um, it was just something that I kept pushing myself and um, putting big post-its around the house <laughs> telling me, stay on task. Even though the other things were also pulling me away from it. So why? I, I guess the question is, why do you, why did you do that? Because I think, again, I'm a writer and I haven't written my own stuff. 
really. I've written a lot of stuff for other people, but I haven't written my own stuff. So why why was it that you that you felt that need to put those things aside to do this? Um, those nudges of heaven were pretty strong, and it they were intense, and they got stronger and stronger, and I needed to sleep so they would go away. <laughs> it was just I felt. I felt the spirit of my father strongly for about four years prior to that. You must do this. You must do this. And then I realized that maybe it was because I was the representative of Lee. I, out of anyone, had this had the time and maybe the resources at the time that could do it. I was worried if I waited too much longer, those stories, I would drawn to do something else and the stories would be left um, unsaid and I wanted to honor my family and I wanted to make sure that my children who never knew my parents had a legacy to follow of a testimony of strength of faith and they understood the sacrifices of their ancestors in their own words not just me telling them as a as a as a parent you need to know how great your ancestry was, but I want you to hear from their own words because they would want it to be said. So you included a lot of audio and even some video in this book. What, what does that add to the, add to the, the, yes, the final Yes, I did as much as I could find. What, what does that add to it? <laughs> it makes it so that it's interesting. Um, there's, it's, I'm excited when I have grandchildren to be able to sit there on a couch, open a book, and have my mother's voice reading them the story of the carrot seed. My grandmother reading, telling them about growing up in Spanish Fork and what she did for the day. It will be exciting for me to hear, to read, to have them listen to my mother's own um, my rendition of where she was when the Pearl Harbor bombs dropped and to hear her testimony and the fear and the star she had for her good friend Mervyn Benyon who went down with the ship. She was, they were friends. These people that knew that are historical figures, um, I cannot begin to mimic the tone and the voice of my own mother to be able to share the stories as she would. So I'm looking forward to posterity having their eyes open up and say, wow, history is not just in a book. My ancestors lived it. They were there. And these are the emotions that have been evoked from what they experienced. And because of that, they've done hard things and I can too. So ultimately, was that your goal in wanting to, what you wanted to produce is, was that the ultimate, what you wanted to accomplish with this book was to have that, that go on in posterity? What, what was your ultimate goal? What did you want to accomplish? Ultimate goal? Oh, I, I can't pinpoint it to one. There's been so many blessings because of what's happened. Um, first of all, I have felt that those stories will no longer be lost, that they will be honored for having lived good lives. They will teach my children um, good principles to follow. And um, they've strengthened me reading about for, the, for my own strength. It's helped me to learn more things about them. I've appreciated greater, greatly my grandparents much more than if I had ever done this project. Along the way, um, we discovered stories about my mother that I had never known, so it taught me um, more things that will strengthen my relationship with her. Um, and I really feel that this is something that we ought to do. Um, it's not an obedience thing that will just say you've got to do that so you don't feel guilty. It, you'll do it because the blessings are immense, more than you would ever have guessed before you started the project. Yes, it can be overwhelming, but the blessings are growing. And especially as I've been passing them out to family members, 
I have been able to open communication with members of my family that I haven't heard from in decades. How can you measure that blessing? It's priceless. So I'm going to, I'm going to hold up the book here real quick. Just, this is the book. As you gave this book out to the people, the people who've seen it, what kind of reactions have you gotten from family members? Oh, all positive. I'm just um, gushing with gratitude. Every single one of them. I went and had appointments face to face with a few of them to show them how to set up their phones so that they could understand how to get the audio and visual working and had some great, great meetings with them. Others I heard from, from the telephone, um, like I said, that I probably 30 years, I haven't talked to them. Um, and I don't take it as a good job I t for myself. I take it as that they have been stirred. They have been stirred in something maybe they don't quite understand yet, but it's something that it's helping them reflect on really what's most important in life and encouraging them to more in, in a better way, value family relationships value the purpose of life, value the understanding of um, our creator. So for someone who's sitting right now at their house and they're, they're feeling that nudge, either about their own life story or someone in their family's life story, what, what would you say to them that would get them off the, off the feeling the nudge and, and uh, moving on to just get started and do something? What advice could you give? You've been through this. Well, I would say begin like you started yesterday and don't take a big bite in it. Very, very small. Think of one person that you could reach out to that maybe could answer a question you have about your family history or one, just one single site on the internet that could answer your, a question you have. Um, and it will grow and you will be surprised that on those times where you don't want to do anything more, something will happen that gives you the courage, the energy, or the excitement to keep going. It will, it will. Um, I guess the same would be true with okay. me and my story. <laughs> The same would be true with me as a writer to write my own story. If I start with one, maybe I'll move, be able to move on and feel that driving me forward. Well, how did you know that I was just looking at my den the other day and I said, uh, I guess it's time for mine now. And my husband told me, he said, this is the greatest book that I know of the history of our lives, Allison. Will you do my side now? <laughs> but well... <laughs> Got more I need nudges. to actually take a big, deep breath <laughs> first, but that's okay. That that's okay. So um, no, it's been well, well worth it. My sister told me this is the greatest thing that's ever happened to our family in written form, too. But I have to say, it's I'm thankful for the day that I happened to run into you at Roots Tech. And I had in my brain that I wanted a book that had a real visual liking and wasn't just boring, born here, died then, with no exciting graphics in between. And you, Kurt, has, have, made, have made it. I mean, really, without the graphics and the beauty of, of the fonts and everything to the details, that has made it so inviting and just an engaging. Um, I had a cousin who opened up the book that I haven't spoken to in years. I sent it to him just out of the blue. He said, opened up the package. He sat down and he read it from cover to cover and never moved. So it has to be, to be able to read about somebody else, <laughs> it has to have some visual yeah. enjoyment. Yeah. Else it's going to fall flat. And Kurt, you're, you and your team 
were the, were the reason behind that? Well, I would say you did all the work. We just had to uh, we just had to add a, add a few touches, but you did all the work, and and that's well. A but great the product. story itself, somebody somebody had to live the story. So granted, the ancestors had to live the story, and then I was just the collector, and you were the decorator. <laughs> so and I'll it all that. worked. Well, I appreciate it very much. Thank you so much for sharing your story. I hope that others can be strengthened by it because um, obviously the, the aspect of sharing our stories strengthens people. And, and uh, the more we do, the better, the better that goes. So, Ab Absolutely. For me, there, there was no, it was a win-win. There was nothing negative about this at all. And the funny thing is, is after I was done, every other project I put on hold, they were still waiting for me. Nothing, nothing changed. So, um, and, and I'm, I'm excited and happy to have that book sitting on our coffee table as a centerpiece of when people come into the room. Um, you know, um, that's, it's a treasure. It's, it's priceless. It's stories and voices and, um, sacrifice and faith and courage. Um, all in one little binding so you know thank you yeah well thanks i appreciate your time stay okay. safe out there all right all right yeah uh, you too all right i'll talk to okay. you later. thanks right. bye